Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. We have a lot of weather unfolding, so we have a lot to talk about, so let's dive right into it. So that big system that we've been talking about for a while now that moved into the West Coast, causing all the problems in California, has officially moved past the Rocky Mountains, and some of that moisture did survive, and now it's going to fuse up with some Gulf of Mexico energy and some cold air from Canada to cause a whole new storm system, okay? And we're really going to see the impact from this in the form of severe weather first, okay? So today, we actually have a marginal risk of severe weather up here in western Kentucky, southern Illinois, southwestern Indiana, into the boot hill of Missouri, down into Arkansas and Tennessee. This is mainly just for some gusty showers and thunderstorms later this evening. N nothing really crazy expected here, but there is a very, very small chance that we see an isolated spin-up tornado or two. So the tornado outlook here shows a 2% probability of tornadoes between Memphis and Paducah. I would be very surprised if we saw a tornado, but the probability is higher than zero, so it's very important that we stay weather aware tonight as these storms come through. Things get a little bit more serious tomorrow with a larger marginal risk area that goes all the way up into pretty much all of Kentucky, all of central and eastern uh, Tennessee into the Carolinas, and then of course we have a big slight risk of severe weather here from Huntsville down to Birmingham, Montgomery, and then in Georgia, this includes Atlanta, all the way up into uh, western portions of South Carolina. Now this is mainly driven by wind, okay? So we have a higher uh, chance of damaging winds in this area. The tornado threat is larger. You can see here the green indicates a 2% probability for tornadoes, but it's not higher, okay? I, now, I wouldn't be surprised if a 5% got added up here a little bit farther north as the day one outlook comes out, but I'm really not expecting anything intense as far as tornado outlooks go here, and I don't think that this is going to constitute a live stream just yet. Things could change, and one of the things that could change that is some new data that's coming in right now. So let's check it out. Okay, so here we are at 10 p.m. tonight. If you want to keep up with the date and time, it's an Eastern up there at the top. Our big low pressure center, our new storm system that's forming off of the fumes from our storm that came into California uh, is now over here in the Central Plains, bringing a little bit of snow up north, but a lot of Gulf of Mexico moisture up into the warm sector. You can already start to see some little storms trying to pop up here on the border of Oklahoma and Arkansas tonight around 10 p.m. Those are going to be the ones that we have to watch closely as we go later into the night. Look at this. All the way out into 2 a.m. on Thursday morning, we really start to see the compilation of storms happening here. But notice how they're really spread out and they're not very intense. All this up here in southeastern Missouri is just rain pretty much. If we're going to see hail, if we're going to see some damaging winds and an isolated tornado, it's probably going to come from these smaller storms a little bit farther to the south. So right now, this doesn't look very intense. The storms do try to gain in intensity around 5 5 a.m. as they get closer to uh, southwestern Kentucky. But still, I think the main threat here is going to be a little bit of hail, some winds, and I'm just talking about the very, very slightest chance of a tornado. Now, as this continues to move off to the east, we're going to see a lot of the radar imagery start to look a little bit scarier here, right? We've got a lot of bright yellows and reds. This is not anything to really be concerned about. It's heavy rain, okay? We're going to see some heavy rain, some lightning, some thunder, some gusty winds up in this area, and it could cause some ice isolated flooding, but the severe weather, if that is going to happen uh, on Thursday after 9 a.m., it's going to happen somewhere along this line or back in this cold core center of the low. So let me pull this forward just a little bit farther. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. The low pressure center is spinning back here, right? We've got cold air coming in. we got the warm air coming up. Some of that warm air is sneaking around towards the center of the low, and this is where we might actually have enough spin, I think, to pose a real threat for some very isolated tornadoes. If you live in central Kentucky up here, I really wouldn't worry too much about it. I would just stay weather aware. But these little isolated cells are the kinds that are, you know, historically capable of producing tornadoes in situations like this. Now, the slight risk of severe weather is for down here, okay, down into Alabama, eastern Tennessee, into Georgia. This is where we're 100% going to have bad weather, okay? Up here, it's like maybe an isolated tornado or two. Down here, it's 100%. You're going to get a wall of wind come through between between 11 a.m. and uh, 1 p.m. between Birmingham and the Alabama-Georgia state line, Knoxville as well. You guys are going to get some pretty good winds. We're talking about 40, 50 miles an hour. We could see some above 60 miles an hour, though, down here into Georgia and Alabama as we get into the heating of the day. Check it out. 2 p.m., uh, 3 p.m., very strong winds coming through Atlanta and then all the way down into Montgomery. This is where maybe a secondary tornado threat starts to pop up on the southern side down here. Remember, this big line 
line, okay, whenever we've got a big linear system like this, it's not going to be as serious as when we have broken up individual cells. Uh, the big line is going to cause damaging winds. These cells are where we have to watch for potential tornadoes. But this whole setup just screams to me it's not very tornado prone. There's not a lot of nadir juice out there uh, with this one, okay? And then as the low pressure center continues to move on to the east, the tornado threat really goes down to zero pretty much after these storms get past the Appalachian Mountains. But we're still going to be talking about heavy rain and thunder up here in Virginia around 7 p.m. on Thursday, and then a strong line of thunderstorms moving through Charlotte, Greensboro, into Columbia during the evening tomorrow, and these will pretty much just be a wind event once again. We push it out even farther, strong winds moving through Greenville at 10 p.m., some heavier rain making it into the D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia area around that same time, and then the storms are pretty much out to sea by midnight. Uh, some leftover stuff down here in Florida, but it's not anything crazy. At this point, the, the focus is going to shift to the northeast where all of this moisture, all of this rain is going to compound over the same areas for an extended period of time and lead to some isolated flash flooding. That is the full progression of what we're talking about here. Things start to get a little bit serious around 3 a.m. on Thursday morning. Watch out up there in northeastern Arkansas into southwestern Kentucky. There's a very slight chance we see a tornado in either this group of storms or this group of storms. I wouldn't count on it though. Um, and then the real deal starts coming to together here with that strong line of thunderstorms with damaging winds, isolated damaging winds that moves through the rest of the east coast of the U.S. So that's pretty much it right there. That's the whole storm. That's why we have slight risks of severe weather. And if anything changes here and we do get, let, let's say we get a 10% probability of tornadoes up here or down here or anywhere in between, we will be doing a live stream. Otherwise, just be generally weather aware. Make sure you're paying attention to the National Weather Service and you will be just fine in this uh, very calm uh, garden variety <laughs> severe storm uh, setup. But what happens next? This is actually interesting. We're going to dive into the full U.S. forecast and go pretty far out here and talk about what the pattern suggests as we go forward into late January, maybe even all the way into early February. We're going to take a really close look at the future here, so let's do that now. First of all, the Climate Prediction Center is bullish, son, on uh, it just being warm. All right, it's going to be a little bit cooler than average down there in the southwest, and everywhere where else it's going to be above average, uh, especially from the south central portion of the U.S. into the southeastern U.S., up into the Great Lakes, the Midwest, and the Northeast. We are going to see temperatures very high above average pretty much for the next two weeks. But here's the thing. The farther north you go, even if you're very high above average, you can still have below freezing temperatures. So although this is not a good sign for snow lovers, it's not necessarily a, an end to winter sign, especially if you live in the Northeast. So let's take a look at the models here and see if there's any chances for snow in the near future. All right, taking a look at the Euro model now, once again, date and time in Eastern is up there in the top right. Starting off tomorrow in the morning, we are going to have our storms down here in Southwestern Kentucky. We're going to have a little bit of backside snow. We're going to have another system coming into the West Coast, bringing in heavy rain and snow uh, to Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. Thankfully, the Central Valley down into Southern California is getting a little bit of a break. Let's push her forward, and what do we have? That big line of storms is going to continue off to the east. No snow, though, <laughs> for the northeast, as a huge warm bubble is taking place here, and that's that's fine. We're going to have other shots as we go forward, but check this out. Something interesting that does happen here is, uh, of course, the big warm bubble keeps everybody in an all-rain situation as the storm goes by, but on the backside, we do have some cold air coming down, and it kind of aligns perfectly with Lake Michigan, and it's going to take a lot of the moisture off of Lake Michigan, loft it up into the air and slam it against the Appalachian Mountains. And that moisture is going to rise, condense and then fall as snow. So if you live in uh, Pennsylvania, Southern Ohio, West Virginia into Eastern Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky portions of uh, Virginia, there could be a pretty decent lake enhanced snow event. And this could definitely lead to a couple inches of snow, maybe even uh, more than that in the higher elevations. So <laughs> that's our best chance of snow right now over here along the East Coast. All right. That's going to get out of our hair, and very quickly, we're going to see uh, that big warm-up happen. This is going to be some very above-average temperatures here from the south-central U.S. up into the Midwest. But look, we got another storm system coming in. What's going to happen with it? Well, let's see. It does do the thing where it goes over the Rockies, combines with some energy from the Gulf of Mexico, and turns into a much bigger system. This one doesn't look very concerning right now, but it does look like it's going to try to bring some more storms, some more rain, 
to a lot of the Midwest and then eventually to the east. A little bit of snow on top there. This is just kind of the pattern that we're in. Storms are going to continue to braid the west coast and what little energy can survive past the Rockies is going to come into the central U.S. and then kind of eject off this way and then whatever happens, happens. But one of these storms, I think, especially as we get towards January 20th, is going to be a little bit more significant. Check this one out. This would definitely be a little bit of a bigger deal. Uh, January 19th, we've got a pretty strong low pressure center here. This would indicate a very real uh, severe weather outbreak in the deep south and some very heavy snow on the backside. If we pull this all the way out, you can see that this was still bringing snow to a lot of the Great Lakes region up here and a very strong line of uh, thunderstorms coming through the southeast, a lot of rain in the northeast. You know, this is 200 hours out, so this is going to change a lot. If this ends up moving this way, this is a snowstorm. This is a out of the park grand slam snowstorm for a lot of people who are snow starved right now. But if it moves up to the north and west a little bit, this actually might become a much worse severe weather situation for a lot of people. So this is the next one that I'm really watching. Uh, this is where my magnifying glass is, and this is where we're probably gonna shift all of our attention to on the main channel as we make some Outlook videos here soon, okay? So definitely keep your eye on the weather between you know January 18th, all the way out through the 20th. Something, I and mark my words here, something is gonna happen with that storm. But any storm that forms is gonna have a hard time producing widespread snow because of how warm we are. This has been an anomalously warm January. It's gonna continue to be so, especially in the east. Our best shot, according to the global ensemble models here, uh, at seeing colder air across the US, or even just, I guess, close to average air, <laughs> it's gonna be through the latter part of January in to early February because as we get closer to the middle of February, things start to warm back up again. So this goes all the way out to February 13th. It does look like we're going to have a brief window for cooler than average temperatures, but we're in a pretty warm pattern here and it's just not looking good for snow lovers overall. If you didn't know, I'm a big snow lover, <laughs> so I'm always rooting for the snow. I know there's a lot of people out there who don't agree with me. Let me know in the comments what you think. Are you looking forward to snow? Are you glad that we're having above average temperatures? Do you just not care? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. I'm always interested in seeing what you guys think because when I first started this channel, it was a bunch of weather weenies who just always wanted snow. Uh, now I think we're, we're reaching more people and I think the opinions are going to be a little bit different. So let me know down in the comments. No matter what happens, I don't control the weather. I'm just telling you what's happening here. I'm always going to have new updates for you and whether it's going to snow or not, you'll be able to get that information right here. I won't have a video tomorrow though because of that little storm system that's going to be coming through. Uh, if it's not going to be like a big tornado producer if, if we don't need to do a live stream i'm gonna head out and do a little leisurely storm chase myself because i feel like it's been forever since i've left this room so thank you guys so much for being here and make sure you like this video subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one goodbye Ooh.